Hello, this is Norm with PDI Technical Support. In this training video, we'll be discussing the operation and troubleshooting of the remotely powered arm-mounted PDI television system. PDI televisions can be powered in two manners, uh, with a external individual power supply, or in this tutorial, we'll be discussing the multiple port power supply which is mounted some distance from the actual TV's location. I'd like to direct your attention to our PDI central power supply. The PDI central power supply, even though it is line core connected, offers no active amplification. Rather, it has insertion loss. It has a passive RF network which accepts an input signal and then divides it amongst 10 outputs. Uh, this particular model offers a minus 14 dB insertion loss. So kind of keep that in mind when you're setting the level of signal into the central in that you need a considerably larger signal than what you might anticipate. Having connected an input signal, what I'd like to discuss now is the style of coax cable that is used between the central to each bedside location. There are actually two different styles prevalent uh, in the cable TV in industry. One of them is a coax cable that has a steel center conductor with a copper plating. And this works great for RF, but keep in mind that the central power supply, which is mounted some distance from the actual TV location, also supplies low voltage AC power along the same coax. And in this situation, the steel center offers a considerable amount of resistance, and we can see issues with voltage drops developing along the coax. Another style of uh, coax, which is a style we recommend using with the uh, PDI central power supply, is one that employs a pure copper center conductor. One way to test a coax to see whether it has a steel center or a pure copper center is to use a magnet. And in this situation, I have a small refrigerator magnet. I'm touching it to the center conductor and there is no magnetic effect noticed. However, if we look at the coax that has a steel center, when I touch it to the center conductor, it sticks. Uh, right away, this is an indication that this style of coax is not appropriate for use with the PDI central power supply in the remotely located televisions. And what I'd like to demonstrate now is I'm going to actually connect up the central with both styles of coax. We'll insert an inline voltage and current meter and we'll see the actual voltage drop that is developed and the differences between both styles. What I have now is a inline volt amp meter. Uh, this meter will actually indicate the voltage and current at the TV. I'm going to connect it to one of the active outputs here on our central and right away we'll notice the no load voltage and current. Uh, the, the TV in a standby condition does have a quiescent or a standby current uh, that is being drawn uh, but however it is very minimal. With the pure copper coax connected, um, we're looking at the voltage that is being supplied to the TV and we're seeing it looks like almost 31 volts, closer to 32, at a standby current of just barely, just barely reading approximately oh, 0.1 amps. I'm going to turn the TV on. And now you'll notice that the current has, has risen up to a half an amp, but the voltage remains almost the same. It's dropped maybe a quarter volt or a half a volt. And that's perfect, perfectly acceptable uh, with a coax cable. Now let's change the coax and hook up a coax that employs a copper clad steel center conductor. With the copper clad steel center conductor style coax, we're noticing approximately 30 volts to the TV at the standby current of a tenth of an amp. Turning the TV on, 
Well, notice the voltage drop of about two, two and a half volts. As you can imagine, with a lengthy coax, the voltage drop can be considerable. Electrically, the steel coax has approximately eight to 10 times the resistance of a pure copper coax. You'll notice the difference in voltage drops between the two different style coaxes. The steel center has approximately twice to three times the voltage drop of a pure copper coax. This will cause an issue, particularly on long runs. In other words, a 100-foot coax that's made of a steel center with a copper plating electrically will appear to be approximately 800 to 1,000 feet long. Upon installation and with the TV turned on, you'll notice low voltage conditions at the TV. Symptoms such as hum in the audio, uh, a vertical or rather a horizontal line which will scroll through the, the picture, or the TV may operate erratically. You turn it on, it'll operate. Once it gets warm, it turns off. These are usually low voltage symptoms and many times it can be traced to using the incorrect style coax between the remotely located central power supply and the bedside TV. Specifying and installing the correct pure copper coax cable will eliminate 95% of the installation related issues involved with the remotely powered PDIR mounted television system. Kind of keep in mind that with the product is an instruction manual that includes coax cables which we have pre-qualified and found usable for remotely powered televisions. In a similar manner, you can take a magnet and verify for yourself that the coax you intend to specify and install contains absolutely no steel. Thank you for joining me on this instructional video. And please remember we have other videos on our other products available on our website.